Welcome to another edition of the Original Gangsters Podcast. This is a quick hitter edition. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Today, I want to uh, touch on something, piggyback off of some reporting from our friends over uh, at Mob Talk, Sit Down, Dave Schratweiser and George Anastasia. Uh, they're the, the OG reporters, uh, you know, the best mob intel you'll ever find in the New Jersey, Philadelphia air, uh, area is going to be coming from Dave and George. They uh, had a had a blockbuster report last week about a appeal coming on a case back from the 1990s related to the Lucchese crime family's New Jersey crew. Marty Tassetta, a one-time boss of that uh, family for a short period of time. He was kind of the third in charge for a long time. Uh, he's doing uh, a life sentence for a racketeering case uh, in state court, which was kind of the follow-up to a very, very infamous case in the 1980s, a federal case uh, that charged a murder, the, the June 1984 gangland slaying of Jimmy Sinatra, uh, a.k.a. Vincent uh, Craparata, who was a Lucchese soldier, who was beaten to death with uh, golf clubs uh, when he refused to uh, allow or tried to refuse to allow his nephew's video poker machine from being a uh, video poker machine business from being extorted. Uh, Tassetta and a number of other members of that Jersey crew were acquitted uh, in what became the longest federal criminal trial in American history, it lasted for uh, two years. A movie got made about it uh, with Vin Diesel called Find Me Guilty. And what this appeal from Tassetta's attorneys are, is saying is that in the 90s, when they came back uh, and hit him with a lot of the same charges in state court, including the murder count in, in the Sinatra slain, that it was... It, it was it was pure vengeance um, and that they trumped up a case. They doctored a case and were, were dirty in, in convicting uh, Marty Tassetta, who it should be noted, uh, was once again acquitted of the Jimmy Sinatra murder. Uh, he was acquitted twice, once in in federal court and, a, and another time in state court. But he was convicted in the racketeering uh, and was hit with a life sentence. His attorney has found some pretty Glaring discrepancies, uh, it appears, uh, and, and some, you know, possible, you know, real traction in getting an appeal. There's going to be a hearing in September. Uh, I think that the two biggest things that that we're hearing about uh, is the fact that it seems like there's a 302 uh, that was put together on a debriefing from the Philadelphia mob underboss, Crazy Phil Leonetti, who was one of the star witnesses at this case, one of four star witnesses that are kind of coming back into the spotlight in this appeal, uh, questioning the veracity of, of their testimony. It seems like what Leonetti had testified seems to be contradicting a 302 that has now been unearthed uh, during this, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in the process of building this appeal, they found a 302 from Leonetti's that, that contradicts his testimony on the stand. And then there also appears to be some uh, records related to a dentist appointment uh, from about 40 years ago uh, that were tied to Marty Tassetta that his appeal uh, appellate attorneys right now are claiming could have been um, fixed or, or, or doctored uh, with, with to affect his alibi. Um, and, and the dates could have been changed. It, it, it's some questions for the judge. It seems like there's going to be a hearing on this and Marty Tassetta might have a, a chance at freedom after all these years. He's in, he's in his early 70s. Um, his brother, Michael Mad Dog uh, Tassetta, he's out of prison. He's been out, I think, for, for 10 years or so. Uh, his boss back in the day, Tumac uh, Astoro, uh, was one of the guys that eventually took the stand against him in the 1990s in the state case. Uh, he's off in witness protection somewhere. But Marty Tassetta is still fighting. Um, we might end up doing an episode, a full-length episode, on uh, the incidents and the circumstances surrounding the Jimmy Sinatra murder. I think it's really interesting. It involves multiple crime families, uh, a series of five different sit downs across three states in three months over the course of, of the summer of 1984. The Lucchese's and, and the Philadelphia uh, Bruno Scarfo crime family were fighting over uh, Jimmy Sinatra's nephews, uh, the Storino brothers, their 
uh, video poker machine business. Uh, it was being extorted and two crime families were fighting for percentages of it. One of the sit downs took place in Little Italy and involved the bosses of those two crime families, Tony Ducks Corallo and Little Nicky Scarfo, Crazy Phil's uncle. And at that meeting, uh, Tony, uh, Tony Ducks allegedly started screaming and, and threatening to, to kill the Storino brothers. Um, it's interesting how it got uh, resolved. Eventually, the New Jersey crew of the Lucchese's uh, took ownership of the video poker machine business. And at the, at the final sit down that decided that uh, uh, Tumac Asatoro was like taunting um, one of the brothers who was shaking, literally like turning purple and, and, and sweating profusely, shaking uh, in his seat because he knew that this guy that had killed his uncle uh, was 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 taking over and, and was going to have uh, a heavy handed uh, presence in, in his life. And, and it, it was a, a, something that was very visceral and, and was discussed uh, at that trial by uh, Phil Leonetti, who was there. And, and by Tumac Asatoro. So um, we'll keep an eye out on that appeal. I think I might want to try to do an episode on that extortion and on the, on the Jimmy Sinatra murder uh, with, with uh, Marty Tassetta's attorney. I'm going to try to set that up. Um, it, it's a fascinating case, longest case, uh, or at least the, the, the preceding case from the feds, the longest case in American history. Check out the movie Find Me Guilty by Vin Diesel. Um, but Marty Tassetta seems to uh, have some uh, a window. You know, it seems to be there, there might be some light at the end of that tunnel, possibly, and uh, could get him out from under that life sentence from a racketeering case because he was acquitted of those two murders. And uh, if you believe his attorneys, it, it looks like this might have been a, a case that was, um, you know, that, a dirty case. And that, that he might have been uh, set up in, in some regards. So uh, we'll we'll keep an eye on it for you here. Uh, shout out to Dave and George over in um, uh, on the East Coast. That you know, for any type of mafia information you want uh, coming from New Jersey, Philadelphia, those are the guys to get it from. And a great job by by uh, snuffing this out and, and letting us all know about the appeal. I kind of deep dove it on on my website, gangsterreport.com. Go check it out there. And like I said, I'm going to try to do a longer episode. Uh, for the OG podcast, maybe with uh, Dave and George, possibly with with Marty uh, Tessetta's attorney, maybe with Marty. I don't know. We'll check it out. We'll see. And uh, maybe we'll we'll do that leading up to the hearing in September. Uh, I will be back on another long form edition with my partner, Jimmy Bucciolato. Thank you to Ben behind the glass for always uh, producing us great. And we will see you next time on OG podcast. Scott Bernstein out. Mm -hmm.